Hank Skinner has been on death row in Texas for 19 years. No, no, I mean, we'll get it together. Don't worry. It's, there are still doubts over his guilt. I'm very tired. This has taken a lot out of me. I've spent 19 years here for something I didn't do, and there's no way in hell I can explain to you in one hour what I've been through. Patrick Bearer has spent the last 11 years on death row in Arizona. Just sadness. I mean, it's, it's not anger. It's just, you know, I hate to be blunt, but it sucks. <laughs> I mean, that, that's like the, the best uh, analogy I could say. I, I... Anthony Graves was held on death row in Texas for 18 years before finally being found innocent. So if you think hell is your worst the worst nightmares, then that's what I lived your worst of worst nightmares for 6,640 days. They have an expression around here, don't mess with Texas. Each year, more people are executed in the Lone Star State than any other in the USA. With as many as 70% of Texans avowing support for capital punishment, it's an eye for an eye in the Deep South. This is death row in Livingston. Those imprisoned here wait an average of 10 years before they can appeal their sentence. It costs the taxpayer in the region of $2 million per convict, far more costly than life imprisonment. Hank Skinner is alleged to have killed three people. For 19 years, he has lived in isolation in a cell measuring seven square meters. Many inmates end up committing suicide. Others die while still inside. According to Hank, it's torture in slow motion. You can hear people crying in the night here. Guys cry here all the time. It's, it's difficult to watch people die over and over and over without having some kind of feeling about it. You know what I'm saying? And it's hard on you. And then <laughs> you, sometimes you get selfish and you think, well, it was better him than me. And then you feel guilty for thinking something like that about somebody that you cared something about. So why is the death penalty still in use? In the US, a convicted murderer may be imprisoned until their death without chance of parole. The spokeswoman for the Houston Prosecutor's Office yep. says that for most victims' relatives, a life sentence is not sufficient punishment. They enjoy taking a deep breath. <laughs> they enjoy, you know, being allowed to read, being allowed to go outside for an hour a day and exercise. There are plenty of people who think that the death row in itself shouldn't exist. That if you're found guilty of murder, you should be taken out back and hung at the, you know, closest tree. The Huntsville Unit. On this gurney, the state disposes of those deemed incurable monsters in the eyes of the law by means of lethal injection. Behind the glass on the right, the relatives of the victim. On the left, those of the condemned. Three years ago, Hank Skinner sat in this cell, just minutes from death. And so I'm thinking, that's it, it's a wrap, it's over with, I'm dead, you know. And so I told my daughter, I said, after they kill me, I said, I want you to go over to the bar and get drunk, and every other shot of tequila, this one's for dad. 13 minutes before the lethal injection was to be administered, the warden received a phone call from the Supreme Court. There was to be no execution. Insufficient DNA evidence had let Hank off the hook. 17 years after the crime he is supposed to have perpetrated. It was New Year's Eve, 1993. Hank's girlfriend and her two sons were found brutally murdered at home, with Hank passed out drunk on the sofa. He has always maintained his innocence, but a neighbour claims he confessed to the crime. The jury was unanimous, and Hank was sentenced to death. She has recanted her testimony fully and said that he forced her to lie. He told her that if she didn't say that, he was going to charge her as being an accessory, take her kids away from her, and put her in the penitentiary for the rest of her life. He's under enormous pressure, and so he's thinking about getting elected next year. i got to convict somebody. It might as well be him. Allegations of blackmail and witness interference are vehemently denied by the U.S. Department of Justice. But as a renowned legal expert on capital punishment explains, this is the sad reality 
in the south of the country. What you have are some prosecutors that basically just cheat, lie, and steal. They'll hide evidence. They'll know it's there, but they know if that evidence comes out, they're not going to win their case. They just assume everybody's guilty. We have a system where you're supposed to be presumed innocent. Quite frankly, when somebody gets charged here, they're pretty presumed guilty. In Phoenix, Arizona, death row inmate number 136226 no longer wants to live. His wife has filed for divorce. There's a stigma to um, her being married to me. And there's a lot of people to give her grief over it. And that's why I chose to give up because it made more sense to me to just get executed. Patrick is not innocent. A former neo-Nazi, he has committed serious acts of violence. He looked on as two fellow skinheads killed another gang member before cutting off the victim's finger. The prosecutor made a deal with the two murderers before the case was tried. In exchange for information, they were given long prison sentences. Of the three, only one ended up on death row. Patrick. Were you offered a plea bargain? Never. Yeah, that's totally the prosecutor's discretion to make that decision. And how do you feel about this? I think it gives too much power to the prosecutors. And you've diminished the power of the judges because they don't have control over sentencing. Prosecutors control it by plea bargaining. In many ways, that's what our system's evolved in, that the prosecutor has become a judge. Today is Patrick's sanity hearing. The courts will decide whether he can still be held accountable for his decisions, having elected not to appeal against the death penalty. His parents have traveled for six days by car from Alaska in order to attend. This is the closest I've been to my son in 10 years in a room to almost touch. They didn't even let us touch him when they got, he got sentenced. They, so it's been 10 years since I put my hand on him and said, son, I love you, I'm praying for you, and I'm there for you. Today was like joy to be in the same room with him. I can't discuss a pending case, I'm sorry. But that has already been decided, right? I can't discuss a pending case. Is the death penalty uh, a lethal lottery? Do you see the danger that the death penalty can be a lethal lottery? Uh, I, certainly it can be. Somebody could make that argument, yes. But then it's, I mean, it should be abolished, then, if you admit I, Well, I, I, I don't agree with that argument. I don't agree with it. The majority of Texans don't agree with it. I feel it's just. I do. Anthony Graves, an innocent civilian, was imprisoned for 18 years awaiting execution. Is this American justice? The state of Texas intentions were to kill me. You know, not only just to take two thirds of my life, but to kill me. So, yeah. Uh, the whole punishment was to take something. And, and what the eye could see, they took from me. But there was a part of me that they just could never touch. That was my dignity, my soul, my spirit. Graves' case was another gruesome murder. Three children, a teenager, and a grandmother were beaten to within an inch of their lives and then shot. A man named Robert Carter was identified as the perpetrator but the prosecutor suspected that he had an accomplice. He came under pressure to name names. Anthony was then arrested and taken into custody. Capital murder? Me? Man, this, this is a big mistake. Capital murder? I never even shot a gun in my life. God, so, I'm a dream of the world, man. Carter later admitted several times that Graves was innocent. The prosecutor was informed, but not the defence. And critically, neither were the jury. They went on to condemn Anthony Graves to death. I seen people stereotyping this young black man. 
I seen 11 white jurors and one black man sit there and be convinced that this young black man, because of who he is in their mind, probably did this. Even though we don't have the evidence, he probably did this. That's how they convicted me. Poor and black, a twofold disadvantage in the American justice system. The case was reviewed several times without consideration of any additional evidence, until finally, the Supreme Court noticed the blatant miscarriage of justice. If somebody could have afforded to pay a, for a lawyer for you, it would have been different? No, oh, of course. Look, <laughs> money rules over here. Yeah, you know, we got a thing called paid justice. Since 1976, 142 death sentences have been lifted. Tallied with the number of prisoners executed, the rate of error is 10%. One in every 10 sentenced to death is innocent. Doesn't that put the whole system into question? Because I don't think can't... so. I, I, I think it validates the system. I think it says we've got checks and balances in place and they're working you, so that you when you get to the end like 20 years of the lives of death row inmates and, and and if you can find a perfect system we'll use it how many percent chance do you give yourself to get out of here i don't even think about that if I, that would be what would drive me crazy for the parents of inmate patrick bearup it was not enough that they should live in dread of their son's extermination by the state. They must now mourn the death of his younger brother, who recently committed suicide. The death penalty never simply ends one life. Anthony Graves has received approximately $1 million from the state of Texas in compensation. But no one has officially apologized. What's happened to him could happen to anybody and he has vowed to fight to the death against the draconian practice.